Hello guys, welcome to Easy Learning. Our topic for today's session is machines. So when we say a machine, how do you understand by the word machine? We say a machine is any device which helps in making work easier and faster to do. So any device that helps work to be easy and be done faster is what? It's a machine. So let's look at the, the, the definition. Machine is a device which helps make work easier and faster. So this is the definition for it. Uh, sorry, a machine. A machine works in such a way that when a force is applied to a point, it increases the force at another point. So let's say we we apply a force for five newtons, a force as slow as five newtons to raise an object which, which requires a force of twelve newtons. A machine can aid in raising this object with a, with a force of 5 newton because when this 5 newton is applied to a point on a machine, it's what the machine will increase this force to 12 newton or a higher force than the 12 newtons in order to raise this object. This that's how a machine works. So with this to make the way very easier and faster. So there are some simple machines that we use in our daily lives, which are the uh, we have the GS, we have screws, we have the levers, we have pulleys. We also have inclined plane. Yeah, we have. I also have wedge and a whole lot of them. We also have the wheel and the axle. So we will we will consider each one of them, but for this part, we will just consider levers. Then for the next session, we will look at the rest. So let's consider levers. A lever is also a kind of machine. It's also a kind of machine. Yeah. So let's look at levers. A lever consists of a rigid bar. Of a rigid bar, a rigid bar which rotates, rotates about a fixed point. Called the pivot. So a, a lever consists of a rigid bar, which will rotate about a fixed point, called pivot. And we have parts of a lever. When we go into details, you understand what we mean by a rigid bar rotating about a fixed point, called a pivot. So with this, we have parts of levers, which is the so parts of levers. We have the effort, we have the pivot, and we have the load. So these three parts form what you call the levers. So in every lever, we have what you call the effort, pivot, and the load. Let's look at what each of them stands for. Let's take them one by one and look at what they stand for. 
So let's consider effort. Effort. Okay. So effort, effort is the effort. Is the is the force applied? Is the force applied at one end? Applied at one end of a lever to overcome. A load so in a lever where that part of lever called the effort so is the force so the force at which you apply at the at the point on the lever to overcome the load is what you call the what the effort so when you apply so let's say so remember we said a uh, lever consists of a rigid bar so let's say you have a rigid bar like this so it turns about uh, what a fixed point so let's say we have uh, a block of 12 newtons it needs a force of 12 newtons to, to raise it right so where you apply the, the force here is where you apply the force to raise this thing so let's say if i apply the 5 newton force it's going to raise this thing with ease you understand so this place is called the effort where you apply the force it's called the effort so this is the effort here. Yeah, so you uh, so this is all about effort. Let's look at load. So when we talk about load, load is a force to be overcome by the effort at one end of the lever. So a load is the force to what to be overcome by the effort at one end of the lever so if the force to be overcome to be overcome by the effort at another point of the lever yeah so the load so let's let's see a diagram a diagram and let's see how it works so we have a rigid bar we have a pivot so if an object is here which needs a force of 12 newtons to be overcome this is the effort you you put in place to overcome this load right so is it so this 12 newton the force you need to overcome in order to what to raise the load and it will overcome by the effort so it says is the force to be overcome by the effort at another point of the lever so it's another point right it's not on the same point as the effort but it's on another point on the lever you understand so this is what is called the load let's look at the pivot and from the diagram above, you know that the pivot is where the the whole rigid bar, this rigid bar, this whole rigid bar, the pivot is where this whole rigid bar rotates. Right? So this bar goes up, this comes down, up and down, up and down. So this is where this rigid bar turns or rotates. You understand? Yeah, so a pivot. Is the is the fixed point and it's also always a fixed point. You see, it doesn't move. It's always at where it is. It doesn't move. It doesn't move with this one, the rigid bar. So it's the fixed point where is a fixed point or is a turning point where the rigid bar would. Rotates. You understand? Yeah, so this is the pivot. And 
And the labor, labor is classified into three classes. And these classes, labor is classified, is classified into A lever is classified into three classes. And these classes are based on the arrangement of this part of lever. So it is based on the arrangement of the pivot, the load, and the effort. This determines the class of a lever. You understand? So I just want you to put this somewhere. This lettuce. Plea. I call it plea. Uh, and I want you to put it somewhere. We will need it later. So these classes are we have the first class. We have the second class. And the third class. So these are the classes of what? Of the lever. Here, in the, I, I, I already told you that each class of the lever is determined by the position of the pivot, the load and the effort. And with the first class, the position of the pivot is always at the middle. So we can have the load, the effort, or we can have the effort, the pivot, and the load. And the first class. So under the first class, the pivot is always at the middle. But the load and the effort can be interchanged. The second class, we also have the load to be at the middle the load so we have the load to be at the middle we can have the pivot here the effort here we can also have the effort here the pivot here so this is second class this is how the arrangement is done and the third class the third class also has an arrangement of, whereby the effort is at the middle we have the pivot and the load, or the load and the pivot. So as you see, you can see that it follows <coughs> when they look at what I tell you to write somewhere, somewhere. You see, the first class match the first one. The second class, the middle match the second one. And the third class, the middle also match the third one. So always, it's a middle that is constant, but with the other ones, you can interchange them. So is the middle that you are looking for and with this we can put this abbreviation somewhere okay this stands for people to load them efforts on respect it, it must, you must know that it is going in a respective form so the pivot is coming first so it's the first class the load is coming second the second class and then effort is coming third, the third class yeah so you must do that this arrangement is specified mainly at the middle. So let's look at them one by one. I know I've already explained, so let's look at some examples under them. So as we said earlier, the, the first class has the pivot at the middle. So one of the first class levels, let's see some examples. We have the seesaw. As the diagram I drew earlier, I drew earlier, it was a seesaw, right? Hope ever, everyone has seen a seesaw before. A pivot here. And here, let's say a load of a load is here. We apply the effort here, right? Here's the effort, here's the load, and the pivot is always at the middle, doesn't move. Or the, the, the effort, then this load can come here for the load to be here, this effort too can come here. Yeah, and still so the P the, the pivot is still at the middle, that doesn't change its position, yeah, which makes it the first class. Also, have a scissors. So, example one. We have the seesaw. Example one. We have the seesaw. Example two. We have the scissors. We 
you have the scissors uh, we also have the the claw hammer the claw hammer we also have shovel let's look at how the scissors becomes a first class you see we know a scissors is looks like something like this please forgive my brain okay yeah you know a scissors looks like something like this yes okay so when you want to use scissors you place your hands here this is where the pivot is you see something is uh, a button and an is placed here to stitch it together this is where these two rigid body turn up, turns about. A load is placed here to be cast, to be cut. This is where the effort is what is placed, right? Or is applied to cut this thing into two. So here we have the effort, we have the pivot, and we have the load. So we can consider it as what, as a first class lever. We also have the claw hammer. We also have the shovel. Let's see the shovel too. As for the shovel, when you're picking an X or an X from the ground, you use you wrap the, the hands or you loop the hands around this place. You hold this place and put this place in the X, right, or on the, in the ground. When you put this in the in the ground to carry it, you see the X becomes the load. You pull this one down to raise it up to raise this place up. Right, you pull this one down to raise this up. So we hold this place to pull this one down, and this place becomes a what? The pivot because it's where the whole rigid body is turning about. You understand? Yeah, so here becomes the effort, here becomes the pivot, and here becomes the load. So with this, you can see that it's a first class what? It's a first class lever. We also have claw hammer. Yeah, it also have, goes with the same principle. Claw hammer is used for plugging out what news. So let's see the how it works forgive my claw okay so this is the new this is this is the this is the effort right this is the effort and this is the this place becomes the what the pivot right you hold this like this you pull it you see this place becomes fixed, so you go here, turning about, you get it, yeah. So something like this. So here becomes the loop. You are you are plugging it out. You understand? Yeah. So the pivot is at the middle. So you go something like this. Here becomes the fixed point or where the whole body is what turning about. You understand? So you apply the effort for the load for the load to your account. So you see some we have more examples of first class you can have so many here i'm going to we have we also have pliers yeah you also have them a whole lot so this is the first class let's look at the second class the second class i explained earlier for the second class for the second class the load is always at the middle. So you have the pivot, the effort, or the effort and the pivot. So I, I have explained here. So let's look at some examples. So we have the real barrel. Let's see why a real barrel is a second class lever. We all have seen a real barrel before. So something like this, yeah, something like this. So we have the tie to be here, right? Yeah. So in the real barrel, you see that this is where the load is being was placed, right? We hold this place to raise it up in order to overcome this load. And this, this whole body is turning about a fixed point. Of this so here becomes the pivot here is the effort and here becomes the load where the the, the items you bought from the market is being placed you understand or where your sand is being placed 
maybe you're amazing where your son is being placed this is a load this is the place we hold to overcome this load and this is a this is a pivot where it is fixed so this whole body is turned about this fixed point so we know that a real barrel is a second class level we also have a nut cracker you see a nut cracker is in, in the form of something like this yeah, I know some of you have seen some before, some of you have also not seen some before. Yeah. So something like this. This is where the nut is placed. And this is where the hand is placed. You apply a force to break this nut. This is where this tool is turning about, right? It's moving about. So this becomes the fixed point. The fixed point. Yeah, and it's called it the pivot. And this place is where the load is placed. The nut is placed to be cracked. So this place is the load, and this is where there was the the the, the force applied to overcome this one, to break this nut, and here becomes the effort. So you can see effort load pivot, effort load pivot. Yeah. So a nut cracker can also be classified under a second class lever. So you can have a nut cracker. Okay. So another, we can also have bottle opener. Yeah, bottle opener also work under the same principle. Also works under the same principle. We also have the paper cutter. Yes. The bottle opener too. Let's have, yeah, it also work with the same principle. With, because of time, I want us to do things very fast so that we can complete our lesson for today so and this is all about the second class and let's look at the third class level for the third class level for the third class as i said earlier the effort is at the middle the effort yeah and we have the load the pivot or the pivot and the load so this is about the third class. The third class you can have a table knife, right? Yeah, so this example like you have the table knife. Let's look at why the table knife is what? It's a third class lever. In the table knife, this is how a table knife is like. So let's say this is a knife. Okay. And you wrap the hand here and you stretch a finger, right? To this place. Yeah, to cut it, something like this. So this is where the load is being placed. This is where you have your bread or your piece of cake or anything. anything. Your bed, you remember your bed, right? Yeah, the, that piece of cake you were cutting, it was placed here. This was the knife, and this was the thumb. So this is where the effort is being what used, or the effort is being placed. You place the effort. Your hand is placed here, so you apply the effort here in order to what to overcome this load. You understand? Yeah, and this is where the this one. You see, it's something like this. So you can see that this place is fixed with this place. This place is fixed. This two thing is turning about this place, right? You see, you see how the hand is going. This place is fixed. This is how the knife also works. So this will be the effort and the load. So you have the load, the effort, and the pivot. So P E O P E O, right? As I said earlier, yeah. We also have the human forearm. We also have the fishing rod. We also have the fishing rod, we have the forcep, we also have the forearm. For the forearm, you see, look at my hands. This one. So when I want to raise this hand up, this hand becomes a load. We have the, the bicep and the tricep, right? Okay, so when I want to raise this arm, the bicep contracts to raise this so 
it's it's when as it contracts, it apply a force. It apply it applies a force to raise this arm up. So as this arm is raising up, this place is there. Con is out at a, at a fixed point, right? Yeah. So you have the pivot, you have the effort and the load, right? So as you can see, the load is here. You have the load. You have the effort. You have the effort, and we have the pivot, right? The pivot is at the back of the effort. So pivot. So that's why the, the forearm is considered as what a third class what lever. So these are all the classes of a lever. And now let's look at some two technologies and a lever that you shouldn't forget. It can also be found anywhere. You also use that, that one for calculation very much. Yeah, so you have to put it in your mind uh, so that you won't forget. But you can write it somewhere. We have what you call the effort distance. The effort distance and the load distance. For the effort distance, for the effort distance, is the distance. The effort distance, the effort distance, the distance from the pivot to where the effort is applied. The effort is applied. So let's have our seesaw as I drew earlier. This is the pivot. So for this is the where the effort is applied. This is the load. So from this place to this place is the effort distance. The effort distance. You can also write the ED. So it's the effort or distance. So that is the definition for effort distance. And so the load distance is similar to the effort distance. But that one is what is the distance from the, the pivot to the load. So as you can see from the diagram here, you can say the load distance is from this place to this place where the load is or is found or can be found so this is all what you have to know and deliver we will be using this for calculation so you have to put it or you have to write it somewhere you won't forget okay so this ends the first lesson for today on machine we will continue the other one in another lesson yeah so we talk about we talk about the pulley and the inclined plane and a whole lot of things Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.